the bride if we can have the groomsmen and the bridesmaids to come forward as well to take some pictures before we go forward hands together again we thank God for Bishop Jones and Lady Loretta come on City of Refuge family give God a hand praise please take your seats
Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Today is, is very special to all of us. We have some wonderful people in the building, amen, to have some brief remarks. At this time, we're going to call the chairman and the assistant chairman and the whole deacon board and the financial team, amen. Please receive Deacon Kimball and the board of deacons. Come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what an auspicious occasion. Uh, you know, uh, uh, two songs came to mind when, uh, when uh, I was asked to make this presentation. Uh, one is a secular, two of them are secular songs. And uh, I'm not going to ask uh, the, the band to find my key. Uh, they're, they're not going to be able to find my key, even though they're very professional. So I'm, so I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> but, but I was thinking about that old traditional song, Bishop. Another bride, another June, another sunny honeymoon, another reason. Another season for making whoopee. <laughs> a lot of shoes, a lot of rice. The groom's so nervous, he answers twice. <laughs> it's really killing. He's so willing to make whoopee. <laughs> and then there's this, uh, because of the length of their relationship, there's this other song that came to mind. And uh, you guys are going to have to pick up on this because you, you won't be able to find my key, okay? <laughs> but it says, what's this old world coming to? Things just ain't the same. Anytime the hunter gets captured by the game. <laughs> okay, but no, it, <laughs> oh. But it, it, it's a wonderful occasion. Bishop, we are so happy for the both of you. I mean, we are so happy. But what God has brought together, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a very, I mean, worthy and blessed occasion. And on behalf of the board and of deacons and trustees and all the members of the City of Refuge, we'd like to present this token of our love and appreciation to our pastor, greatest pastor in the world that's why we're here and we we uh, weren't, weren't sure bishop whether right now we should hand it to you or hand it to her I'm, I'm not sure but right now we're gonna hand it to Bishop Jones let's give them a hand hey amen we thank God for our chairman and the Board of Deacons, and also our financial committee. City of Refuge, she fights for us. We love her. She's our voice. Please receive Congresswoman Maxine Waters as she comes. We love her so much. Thank you for speaking up for us, amen. A party is not a party without Congresswoman Maxine Waters, amen. Oh my goodness, giving praise to God. Isn't this a wonderful day? You know, we've been thinking about a lot of things that are going on in this country. We've been thinking about Buffalo, and what happened there with the killing of 10 blacks. We're thinking about what happened to the children in Texas. We're thinking about the pandemic and the inflation and all of that. But I think God has a way of lifting our spirits. Something wonderful happens. Something beautiful happens. And this day is that something wonderful and that something beautiful as we praise, honor, Bishop Noel Jones and Sister Loretta, give them a big round of applause. Don't they look beautiful? Don't you feel joyous? 
Aren't you looking forward to that very special day when Bishop and Loretta will jump over the broom? Give them another big round of applause. Thank you so very much for making me a part of your life. Thank you so very much for including me in what must be the joyous day that you will ever experience. Thank you so very much. Amen. Two more speakers, amen. He also fight for us, <laughs> but in a different way. Please receive our attorney, amen, Rob Robert Simberman, as he come. <laughs> while he's coming. We want to thank God for the bridesmaids. Amen. Looks so wonderful. Can you please stand and bow? Amen. And then also the groomsmen. Amen. Uh, Reverend? <laughs> it's okay, sir. Mr. Robert Silverman. It's the second time that the bishop and Loretta have honored me and asked me to speak at a celebration, even though I can't see anybody with this. Uh, I've known Loretta and the bishop for like six or seven years. And I, right now I can tell you they're my close family. I'm marveled and amazed <clears throat> how hard they work, how dedicated they are to all of you, how they love and support and respect the church and everyone. And all of that characteristic is channeled in how they deal with each other. It's wonderful. What I'm so proud of is that the two of them have created these beautiful nonprofit public benefit entities for, for everyone. All of the charitable organizations and functions over the years is amazing. It all is channeled to help the needy in our community, which is beyond belief. I have no doubt that this marriage was made in heaven And God willing, it will last forever. Thank you. Amen. He is the best man of our Bishop Jones. Please receive Prophet Paction as he come. <laughs> as he come in his own way. Blessings to everybody. I am honored to stand here in front of everybody and also honored to be the best man for Bishop Noel Jones and Lady Loretta. It's my honor and I just want to say thank you to the best couple in town. I remember asking Bishop, Bishop, are you sure she is the one? And Bishop said, she is the only one. She is the only one. And I've been inspired by how Bishop handles the First Lady Loretta. And I'm just excited. I believe I'm excited more than everybody here. And I can't wait for the 4th of June. And I don't have much words because I don't want to cry today. I'm reserving my tears for the 4th of June. But thank God for what he did for us. And I just want to appreciate everybody for coming. And I don't, I don't have much words because I'm so excited. 
but I'm happy for the bishop and I'm happy for Lady Loretta and God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Receive our pastor. Please receive Bishop Kevin Adams. Amen. It's so good to see from, from Tennessee. Amen. <laughs> They saying for you to preach, Bishop Adams. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. Come on, you can do better than that. I just love the bishop and I love uh, First Lady Loretta for God to allow us to witness in time a love that I believe that he ordained and predestined before the foundations of this world. I love them both. Your boys are here. We got you back. And uh, we got First Lady Loretta back. And uh, we thank God for all of these beautiful bridesmaids. Let's give them a hand as well. Thank you for allowing us to participate in this love affair. Thank you, City of Refuge, uh, for your spirit of excellence. We love all of you. We're glad to be here, and we know the best is yet to come. Amen. Thank you, sir. Any other bridesmaids? Amen. Any more? everyone introduce themselves anymore okay they coming <laughs> bless God bless God city of refuge it's so good to be here I haven't been here in a, in a minute and um, Bishop I love you dearly I've known you uh, probably half my life and Loretta I've known you for a very, very long time. And you are like a sister to me. You are a blessing to me. You're my confidant. Um, I can trust you with my stuff. You can trust me with your stuff. And I just appreciate you and our sisterhood. And I am so ecstatic for you both. I don't know what took you so long. <laughs> but I am so happy to be here and celebrating you too and and this is the day that the Lord has made especially for you and before the foundations of the world he had this day in mind for you both and I'm just again so excited I'm sure as we all are we support you we esteem you we honor you we pray for you we stand for you and thank you for having me love you guys Loretta and Bishop, wow. <laughs> I love you both so much. I love my pastor, and I love my best friend. And we've been through so much together. And to see God has rained and shined on you both, this, it makes my heart race. And I want to tell you, if you want to know what love is, like Tiffany Haggard say, this is what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you guys I love you so so much and this is showing us you can't stop what God plan is no matter what you do you can't stop it and today with everything that's going on in this world look at God thank you praise the Lord everybody Loretta I've known you for 20 years. Bishop, I have been admiring you for more than 20 years. I just wanna say thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all that you've done for me. So many people don't know, but you're a prayer warrior, Loretta. 
even though you don't say much sometimes, I know that inside you're praying. And so today, we pray for you. We love you. We admire your strength. We admire your poise. We admire the gift that God has inside of you. We admire your distinct words that you say to people that you know exactly what to say when to say it. We love you. Bishop, you're amazing. You have blessed so many people. I'm reminded of a sermon that you preached over 20 years ago and you said to me that spoke to my heart at the point of my need was you're too gifted to be hid and forever and ever and ever I will love you and I will support and pray for you because of the words that you have blessed me with. So together, you two are a power couple and we love you. God bless you. We're praying God's richest blessings upon you. And like your friend from Memphis said, the best is yet to come. Thank you. Please receive the groom. Bishop Jones, I'm so happy for you. Man, we happy for you, Bishop. You may be seated, please. I, I, I never thought in a million years that getting married would be all of this. I, 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 I really, I, uh, and uh, you got to pray for me uh, because my house is not the same anymore. I, I feel as if I'm being pushed into a little corner and it's quite an adjustment. Isn't that right, Myron? It's, it's quite an adjustment. I never... I need counseling. It's like giving up my space. People would say to me all the time, they say, well, uh, Bishop, you have a lovely home. And I would say to them, it's just a lovely house. Because to have a home, you need someone to make it palatable. And so now I'm, I'm content. I'm content. And I made the only choice. I made the only choice. And they, they asked me why, and I gave them 15 reasons why I chose Loretta. I gave them 15, and I still have one more, Joe. Joe Paul, I still have one more. I told her some years ago, I said, if you take my advice, you'll never need my money. And she took my advice and gave me a Bentley. Because she didn't need my money. Now, I've, I found something else out. I don't know how much talking I should do. Pastor Adams, Bishop Beatty. Uh, where is Frederick from Reno? Frederick, where are you? Oh, good, and his family all the way from Reno. I thank God for you. Love you both. And it's interesting that one, she's very productive, two, she listens. Three, she's an alpha person, without a doubt. 
Four, she's extremely determined. Five, she's very sensitive, especially to people who are in need. Six, she's smart. Seven, well, <laughs> she stands her ground. Eight, she's protective. Nine, she's very careful to make sure that everything goes right. So she does what she calls take a last look at something to make sure that everything is in place. Five, Oh, you're paying attention, huh? <laughs> okay. Ten, she's extremely garrulous and uh, uh, talkative, and uh, I like discourse. Eleven, she saves. She's a saver. Twelve. She is combative. She will fight. Thirteen, she's a nurturer. Fourteen, she's a brilliant chef. Oh, she can cook. Amen. She, she, she learned to cook from her grandmother. I'm at 15 now. Hmm? Uh, 15. She's only ready for 15. <laughs> Her pulchritudinous splendor. <laughs> is only subcutaneous wonder. It really means beauty is only skin deep, that's all. <laughs> but 15, she's not only beautiful on the outside, she's beautiful all the way through. And that's a marvelous thing. She's beautiful all the way through. Seventeen. She's determined to have a way with me. And I like it. I like it. I like it. For once in my life, I don't have to worry about where my money is, how my money is going to flow. 18. She will take care of my kids and my family and whatever I leave, she will make sure they get it. And that's what I love about Loretta. Loretta is a whole, complete and total woman. And I thank God for her.
please receive Lady Loretta. That was beautiful, Bishop. There's a lot of love, Bishop Weeks. I'm so happy for you. everybody for coming to share this beautiful day with us. We had to fight to be here, but it was a good fight. I'm going to tell you a little story of the first day I fell in love with your pastor and my pastor. We were back on Hoover 20 years ago in the month of July we had the first health fair in the city of Los Angeles. I came to City of Refuge, which then was Greater Bethany, to work. And as we were working the health fair, we were overwhelmed. We didn't realize how many people would attend. I fell in love with the work at the church and once we began to work the health fair and see the need, it was something I never experienced and it was something I knew I wanted to continue. I didn't know how I was gonna continue, but I knew at that point I needed to continue this work with the community. Bishop Jones, myself, and thousands and thousands of other people, we went to him and we said, Bishop, we have run out of food. We don't know what to do with the rest of the people. I come from corporate world where everything was transactional. When we run out of food, you will be dismissed. The gates has to be closed. He said, let the people in and feed them until you can't feed them anymore. Continue to feed them. At that moment, my heart was like, feed them. Continue to feed them? Who's going to pay for that bill? He said, I am. His heart is like gold. We have a man among us that I don't really think you understand how generous, how kind, how loving, and how supportive he is of this community. When I work with him, he has one thing in mind you and when he proposed to me and he felt like you didn't receive him it broke his heart he has put so many miles on his back on his mind to make sure that everybody get what they are supposed to get he will go lacking because he had you in mind yes <laughs> and I don't want to be so serious but I want you to know that I'm going to love him until the last day. <laughs> we're not getting a divorce. I already told him we're not divorcing. We're going to make this work. We waited this long to make this work. And not only are we going to make it work for us, I want it to work for you too. We're going to come back after our honeymoon and we're going to roll our sleeves up and we're gonna work for you and with you. Yeah. 
I told him that this is our latter days. Your former days are over. This is your latter days. I'm gonna love you all the way into eternity. <laughs> You're so deserving. He's so kind. He's so special. I just, I just want you guys to know that he's a good person outside of the pulpit. A good person. He has done me well. In spite of what you hear, it's not true. This is a godly man. I have watched you. I have grown from your sermons. I have become closer to God because of you. Yes. And I give you this prayer that I've been praying for 20 years. And this is the prayer I prayed for my pastor, who is now my husband. I ask God to fix your broken heart. I ask God to stop your mind from roaming. I ask God to allow you to rest and not be anxious. I ask God to continue to give you favor, peace, and love. And the day he proposed to me, I saw the transition. <laughs> Once again, thank you guys for coming. It is a blessing to see everybody here supporting us. And see you guys soon. <laughs>
I am so happy for this auspicious occasion, the wedding of our illustrious pastor, the Honorable Bishop Noel Jones and Lady Elect Loretta Jones. I am so happy for you all today. It is an honor to congratulate you. We know that love is in the air, and that's a beautiful thing. And we have to also remember, I remember when the Lord told me before I got married, he told me to stop looking at the outward appearance and look at the heart. And it seems that you and Bishop have looked at each other's heart, and that's a beautiful thing. And I also noticed that you both love yourselves with all of your heart. You love God first, let me put that out there. You love God first, and you love yourself with all your heart. So now you can love each other and not look to each other for feel any need because God has already filled that. So God bless you and congratulations and I love you. As if you, I'm so happy as if you were my daughter. God bless you and I love you and love both of you. Amen. Don't leave. We have the toss for the single ladies and the toss for the single brothers. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, who next? If you want to be next, make some noise. Oh, that was all ladies. Brothers, if you want to be next, make some noise. <laughs> We're going to work on it, Bishop. All the pastor, can I receive Prophet Passion, Bishop Kevin Adams. We have Suffolk and Bishop, Billy Willemeyer, Pastor Carl, uh -oh. my brother, and my brother, and Pastor Dixon. If y'all guys can come forth, amen. We won't be here long, amen. If you can come forth. And Bishop Jones. Bishop, we have you in the middle, sir. There were so many preachers who have come from all over the place just to celebrate with me, and I thank God for them. I, I, I want uh, Pastor Adams, Pastor Oliver, come on up and say, say hello. Uh, Frederick, come say hello to your church. Uh, Pastor Oliver, all the way from New Haven, Connecticut. Amen. My granddaughter is in New Haven. Uh, Pastor Adams from Miami, Florida. Amen. Thank God. Uh, they, they left their churches all the way from Philadelphia. I've got David from Philly, uh, all the way from Dallas, Texas. Uh, when I, whenever I go, he's, how long have you been driving me for 30, 35, 40 years? And we thank God for him being here. Who else am I missing? Who am I missing? Now, Everybody here is a preacher. So I said, instead, I don't know who to give the mic to. So we decided we'd have a little panel discussion. And it started last week when I made a presentation on what about love. And uh, Pastor Joe Paul will, will back me up on this. We're dealing in situations today where, uh, have a seat, those of you can. 
get a seat and and bring another chair for those who are standing where I was listening to a message from an evangelical pastor and it set me back considerably and I said to one of my staff members maybe I should play it so the congregation would know where I was going when I made my presentation. One said play it, one said don't play it and because you're going to give a platform that you don't need to give, you can talk about it. The individual in his presentation, I wouldn't call it preaching because preaching is spoken communication of divine things. When you're preaching, you have to be declaring Jesus Christ. Anything else is not preaching. You've got to preach, and it's gospel. But he demonized Democrats. He said, if you're a Democratic, you're a demon. And he threw them out of, get out of the church. And nobody in the church should ever vote Democratic. Get them out of the church. And it was so hateful. The presentation was just so demeaning to human beings that I couldn't understand it to the point where I said to myself, well, what about love? What about love? And it hurt me because all of us are in the image of God. And God never intended for his image to be murdered, for his image to be a slave, for his image to be talked to negatively. And so what I've discovered is that America spends a lot of time dealing with the clerics overseas who radicalize people to bring terror. But I'm noticing now that we've got preachers who are radicalizing people in our own country to be domestic terrorists. Are you feeling me? The church is not a place to preach hate. It's a place for love. And if you got a problem with anybody you don't run them out of the church. You bring them to Jesus. So if you don't like Democrats, let's get them saved. <laughs> you know, it was just so awful. So today we're going to have a little talk. And we're going to talk about love. And we're going to talk about from each one of you, I want a little statement about how the church ought to operate in relationship to love. And, and my prophet will close. Love, we got a lot of prophets here. We got, we got Obed, we've got Passion, we've got Dixon, all right, we'll save the prophets for last. What about love? Go, Frederick. My name is my, uh, Frederick Thomas, Minister Frederick Thomas from Reno, Nevada. And uh, what about love? 
Love in the church should be a thing, whereas we overlook people's differences because God overlooks our differences. Uh, we should be, we shouldn't be judgmental because God was not judgmental. If you think about the woman at the well, with the issue with the woman at the well, and we all know what she was, don't we? But Jesus never even talked about her. But we are coming to church, we are talk about the prostitute, we are talk about the gays, we talk about the drug addicts, we talk about everything. But when is the church going to start lifting a hand, or reaching for a, a hand to help people to come out of their situations? That's love. Help me to get through my situation. That's love. My wife, baby Stender. That's my princess over there. And the reason why I had her to stand up for it, I'm not gonna take too long, Bishop Jones. We've been married 22 years. Loretta, we've been married 23 years, okay? And, uh, but it's been some hills to climb. It's been a rocky road. It's been a, some of everything. But that woman loves me. She gave me three beautiful kids. Kids stand up. Kids stand up. She gave me three beautiful kids. And, okay. No matter what I did, she didn't divorce me. And she could have walked out any time she wanted to. And she didn't. That's church love. That's real love. Now, if you can't say, now when you say you love somebody, think about what I'm telling you. God says, I will die for my brother if I love him. Pastor Walter Oliver. And Lady Loretta Bishop, you guys exemplify love. Amen. I'm so happy for you. Bishop, I've known you all my life. And I honor you. Amen. But I, I, I think about the, the man with the withered hand. And it seems as though sometimes the church is as critical as the scribes and the Pharisees. But there was a man with a withered hand, and he came into the church, the synagogue, and, and the preachers and the evangelists were waiting for Jesus to do something that they didn't think he ought to do. It was on the Sabbath day, and they said that no one should be healed on the Sabbath day. You should not do anything on the Sabbath day. So they waited to see what Jesus was going to do. And Jesus walks up to the man that, with the withered hand, and he asked him to stretch forth his hands. Now imagine that the Pharisees and the Sadducees don't want to see nobody healed, don't want to see nobody delivered. But Jesus wants to see everybody delivered, everybody healed, everybody set free. And we're so glad that we, amen, are here to honor a great man that loves everybody. Amen. He has treated me, amen, with dignity and respect all my life, even though he has been playing chess since I was a kid. And has been beating up on me. Amen. <laughs> but he's taught me so much. Bishop, I love you. Amen. I'm so glad to be here. Amen. To honor this great love in Jesus' name. Uh, now, this is Loretta's son, Myron. Hi, everybody. Doing today? Yeah, I guess I'm preaching today, guys. I'm going to keep it brief, though. I, I never knew love until I seen it really today, right. like in real life. Like I never seen my mom smile like that, never seen Bishop smile like that. And it just made me feel like it's real, you know? And uh, I never understood why she always wanted to go to the Hoover Church back then when I was a kid. But now I understand, you know what I'm saying? And I, I love everybody at this church for all the years of dealing with me, my family. I appreciate you guys. I love you. Thank you.
What about love? I've been with, uh, I've been serving Bishop for many years, and I have had the privilege of of seeing him up close and personal. And Loretta had talked about his ability to love people without even knowing them or even connecting to what their issues are. I've seen it. I've seen Loretta go beyond her own self to ensure that people are comfortable and happy. I've seen it. I've seen the fighter in her. And yes, she'll fight. But she's doing it out of fighting for what she believes in. I've seen love. We've been places and been through things. But today, Bishop has named 18 reasons why. And he has two more. And I must say that each of those reasons represents the concept of covenant. Because covenant is never convenient, but it's necessary. Covenant is to die for, and that is love. CJ, Pastor CJ. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love could do that. We as Christians must love the Democrats. We as Christians must love the Republicans. We as Christians must love the independents. We must, much love, we must love the, the poor, the rich, the needy, the homeless, the helpless. We must love people with sickness, illness, rich, no money, a lot of money, designer, no designer. That's our job as Christians. Uh, problems arise when we choose who we love based upon political ideologies. Problems arise, they, we, we, problems arise when we choose who we love throughout the week. Uh, it's necessary to remove the guidelines of who we love. Why should we remove the guidelines? Because love is blind. Jesus, in his short period of time here on earth, he displayed and showed love. He fed the hungry. He was with the broke. He was with the rich. And, and that's what Jesus did. And if we call ourselves Christians, we must do as Jesus did. In John chapter 15, he says, uh, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Jesus loves us all. Who are we to say uh, who we should love? We love because Jesus loves us. We love Jesus because Jesus loves us when we sin. When we come home after we were out partying all night long. Jesus loves us when we mess up. He loves us when we have our downfalls. I am more convinced today because on a Friday, Jesus was crucified. And three days later, he rose from the dead. Jesus paid it all. Congressman Waters, I realize I do have hope in this nation. Uh, I have hope in this nation that things will turn around, Bishop. The reason why I have hope because the Romans thought they killed Jesus. And on that Sunday morning, he rose again. As long as Jesus rose from the dead, we have hope in our society. We have hope in the Republicans. We have hope in Democrats. We have hope in loving one another. Turn to your neighbor right quick. Say, neighbor, I love you. Oh, you didn't say like you mean to turn to the other neighbor right quick. Say, neighbor, I love you. Thank you and God bless.
all the way from Miami, my good friend, the Bishop Adams. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. As I am privileged to share this uh, platform with these great theologues and apostles and prophets, I am the least of these, my brethren. Uh, but I am here to celebrate uh, our dear friend and our colleague, Bishop Noel Jones and Loretta, who is such a precious jewel and a gift, not only to him, but to all of those of us that know them. She is the grace that has been missing in his life. I learned something uh, today by uh, watching uh, Bishop Jones and uh, his willingness to uh, deny himself. If you need a working definition for love, love is simply this. It is pursuing the highest good of another at the expense of yourself. Truly, this man of God has done just that. So much so that according to the scripture, even God himself says that it's not good for a man to be alone. We have seen Bishop Jones, those of us who are on this platform who have known him intimately, have known him uh, in his home and have known him on the platforms of this world. And I can tell you that no matter how good he has done, he has been incomplete because God says it's not good for us to be alone. Somebody ought to say amen. It ain't good for you to be alone. If two walk together, if one falls down, the other can pull them up. And I want to tell you that Bishop Jones has been a blessing in my life and has been an example uh, to me because not long after he made his announcement, I decided not to be alone myself. So it's through his example. My wife is not here. She's in Washington, D.C. But she sent me here to celebrate with you and the great church of uh, this wonderful city of refuge. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this celebration. It's all about y'all. All the way from uh, Richmond, California. My, my, my very, 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 very good friend. Pastor Billy, I know you, I'm not gonna mess it up. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about love? Uh, when I, first of all, when I think about love, uh, I guess the point I would make is love is caring about the marginalized. I think about Matthew, the 21st chapter, when Jesus uh, goes into the temple and he kicks out uh, those that were selling in the temple. I, I've heard it preached a lot of times uh, that you shouldn't be selling in the temple, but that really wasn't what it was about. It was about the fact that the religious were taking advantage of the marginalized. That's right. uh, they were causing them exactly. to have to uh, travel near and far and get to the temple, and they would hike up the prices with what they needed to sacrifice. And so uh, when I think about love with these two, if I had three points, uh, three points. Go they ahead, quit right. though, they quit. Uh, dealing with my friend, the first is caring. Uh, Bishop Jones is a very caring person. Uh, I can remember one time he preached here and it was jam packed. I mean, every seat was taken. And we leave out, we jump in the car, and on the way to the house, before we can hit the corner, he's at the bus stop with the windows down, thanking the people that caught the bus to come hear him speak. That's caring. 
Uh, I can think of another situation where I, uh, I, yeah, I had him a whole week. I said I had him a whole week uh, in Tennessee. And uh, I'm walking him to his seminar, and the people wanting to take pictures. And I'm like, you're late. you got to get to the seminar. So I'm pushing him, trying to push him. And he turns around. He says, Billy, are they waiting for you to come to the seminar? I said, no, Bishop, they're waiting on you. He said, okay, take this picture caring person that would take time out to make sure he touched everybody. He's courageous. Uh, he will tackle any topic. He will tackle uh, any criticism. Uh, he, he, he will, matter of fact, he's a very transparent person. And so he's caring. And this last C is the bishop. I'm sorry, Loretta. He's cheap. Over at the house, the house is it's hot in the house. I said, Bishop, I said, can I turn the air conditioner? Don't turn that air conditioner on. I said, Bishop, it's hot in here. Well, open up a window. I said, Bishop, I know you can afford to pay the air conditioner bill. That's why I got money, because I don't run my air. Open up the window. True story. <laughs> and so I, uh, I thank God for these two that will definitely uh, deal with the marginalized, those that, that can't afford, they, they will feed you, they will clothe you, they will give the shirts off their back. And so we thank God uh, for two people. And my last three C's is that you keep uh, First Lady Loretta Classy you keep her clean, and may you never make her cry but to enjoy something and one of your crazy jokes. Uh, what about love? What about love? My bishop just came in, uh, Dr. Irvin. What about love? Wow. After 37 years of marriage, I think I could speak about love and some ups and downs in love. My wife and I are currently doing a series on the family. We started off with Genesis from the beginning. And I dealt with Adam, where art thou? Being responsible, man being responsible. And she dealt with Eve, the pan snatcher. If you don't stay in authority, she will take the authority. Can somebody say amen? When the Bible says, and her desire shall be to her husband, in the Hebrew, that means to snatch down. It doesn't mean to lay and wait and be cute. It means, if you don't do it, I will. One thing I know about Bishop Noel Jones, he will handle the responsibility. The West Indies in him, the spiritual part of him, the hard worker in him. He'll work five jobs and do all of them well. He has a Joseph talent where he can wear many coats and do many things well, but we know his speaking is paramount, amen? But uh, I know that Loretta has had nothing to worry about for the last several years and will continue to have nothing to worry about because you are, as I said, when Adam backed out of his responsibility, you know, it's the woman that you gave me, he was supposed to be a covering. But when you're not being a cover ring, you find fig leaves and become a cover up. We're never supposed to be a cover up, we're supposed to be a cover ring. I know you shall continue to be a cover ring because of who you are. That's love. Very quickly, my brothers, uh, I don't want to lose anyone. Now we're getting too close to the prophets. But before I get to the prophets, I've got to hear from Chattanooga, Tennessee, <laughs> Bishop Kevin Adams. Amen. God, God, God bless you, Bishop. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I was just sitting there thinking, uh, February 2004, people had to go to the theaters to see the Passion of Christ. 
And I began to think that uh, perhaps they had to go to see it in the theaters because they couldn't see it in the church. I think, I think we're living in a dark day now where churches are a mile long but an inch deep. And people are not concerned about how big our buildings are. They're not concerned about our big screens and all of these things. They're concerned about can I find love in the church. I, I thank God for this great bishop and uh, Loretta who modeled out love uh, towards us and for us. They're an example of love. And I don't believe you can effectively love if you don't know God. Uh, for God is love. And so a lot of people trying to do love without God. And then uh, number two, a lot of people trying to do love without first loving themselves. Uh, the Bible says you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the question is asked, how can I give to you what I've never given to me? So I think it begins with loving God and experiencing and receiving the love of God, then loving oneself, and then the expression of the corporate church where others can come and find love. Uh, lastly, I think uh, it's interesting that the Bible tells a man to love the wife, but it never tells the wife to love the man. Uh, it's nowhere in the Bible where it tells uh, a woman to love uh, the man. It is only there that it says that the older women uh, should teach the younger women uh, how to love their husbands, but it's not a command. It is a command to the man, but with the woman, she is told to respect her man. That's what the whole issue of submission is about. <laughs> I'm not even going there. <laughs> and so I think anybody who's in a real love relationship will grow together. Uh, three things I think ought to happen, and I'm through, uh, that if a man is worth his weight, the Bible says in Psalms 128, that his wife ought to be like a fruitful vine by the side of the house. You cannot bring winter home and expect a summer wife. Uh, the vine has to have the right type of environment to grow in. And if the vine is in the right type of environment, it will do three things. It will clean, climb, and cultivate. Uh, a lot of times people get married and they say you're not the person I married the question is how did the person become worse on your watch uh, uh, sometimes we're guilty of giving the person what they used to need and so the Bible says dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor as the weaker vessels that your prayer is not hindered. Know what season she's in, because what used to work may not work now. Uh, flowers and candy were good, but now I need somebody who can pray me through. And so when he sets the right environment, she will cling, she will be more intimate, she will climb, she will be higher, she reach her goals, she will accomplish her dreams, and number three, she will cultivate, as Bishop said, any woman that he's with or being with Loretta, he talked about how she doesn't need his money, that she will learn from him and she will become an entrepreneur. She will have her own money. If the man is worth his salt, then she ought to become more productive. She ought to be able to grow. She ought to be able to produce. And that's when you see true agape love in a relationship. Uh, I just noticed something that is just so awful. We have no women on the panel. Sister Beatty, Sister Beatty, you have to come and say something. What about love? Bishop, allow your wife to come, please. We're almost finished. We're saving the prophets for last. Sister Bernadette Beatty. She was Bishop McMurray's secretary, and she is still vibrant and well-respected. 
Somebody give her a mic, please. What about love? Praise the Lord, everybody. I do honor God today, and I appreciate the Lord for allowing us to be here, for allowing us to be in the lives of Bishop Jones, Sister Loretta. And one of the things that I can say about love is love is an amazing thing. And I say this not because I've read about it. I say it because I've lived it. I say it because I've experienced it and our bishop and his predecessor. And it's, it's the continuation, even as Pastor Billy said, looking out for the marginalized, the disenfranchised. When you have a leader that has a heart of God, you are truly in the presence of greatness. When you have a leader who will serve, you're in the presence of greatness. And I thank God for the 40 years, I think, 40 years. that we've been in each other's lives. It's been nothing but love. Love that it expands from the pages of the Bible and it walks among us. I'm grateful to be here. I'm here because of love. God bless. Thank you. There are a whole lot of churches in the Bay Area. We travel here. If we have to drive, if we have to fly, whatever it is, because I know that this man who loved, in fact, the first time, <laughs> the first time Bishop invited us over for dinner, it wasn't a party, it was, hey, come over and have dinner. Well, there was no dinner. He was pulling things out of the refrigerator, and while we were eating, he was in the office studying. Not for not for tonight's service, he was studying for next weekend's service. That's love. Because the most important thing we need is to hear what God says about love, what God says about our souls, what God says about our future. So we love you, Bishop. I, love you too. I appreciate everyone here today. Sister Loretta, God bless you. Thank you. God bless, God bless. All right, now we're almost, we're almost finished. We're almost finished. Uh, JP, did he leave? Did Joe Paul leave? All right, he's gone. All right. Uh, now it's the time for my prophets. My prophets. Now who's going to begin? Obed. Go ahead, please. Now, these gentlemen, Ghana, Zimbabwe, they're coming a long way. Zimbabwe, Ghana. My Ghana prophet is going to go first. Thank you, Bishop. Um, I would love to stand because uh, when you see greatness, where I come from, you either bow or you stand and you salute. And um, my big brother here said that he is the least. That makes me the least race to the power too. Because where I come from, the only reason why I find myself here today is because of love. love. I am here because love is bishop, doctor, pastor, apostle, prophet, Noel Jones. Now, the reason why I gave more these titles is because if you look at all of us here, we have come this far because some way, somehow, we have received an impartation from this great man. Out of him, we have prophets, we have teachers, we have doctors, we have bishops, we have apostles, name it. And so he is an embodiment of the fivefold ministry. He is love. I will not even want to look further, will not set through the dictionary to find the meaning of love. Love is what we see. For a man of his caliber, with all that he has, to take time and the years to wait on the Lord until today is because he first thought about us, the church. Now, when the first lady, um, Loretta, was speaking, she said something that really touched my heart. 
she said that when bishops' um, intentions were not received the way he expected, his heart was broken. Now, I asked myself a question. Why should he care? He cared because he is a man of love. He had to come to the position of allowing you to embrace and accept what will make him feel good. Can you imagine? A man that is full of hate will not do it. A man of his caliber will not do it. Let's be real. We need him. He doesn't really need us at this point of his life. And so for him to do all of this, Bishop, I stand here representing my continent. And well, uh, that would be selfish because I have my senior brother here. But I stand here representing my country, Ghana. And Bishop, you know how much we love you in Ghana and how much you've been a blessing to us, uh, to the nation in general. And I come with greetings from Mother Ghana. And we want you to know that you have imparted not just the continent of Africa, but you have imparted the world. And that is the reason why I am here. Finally, I would like to say this. Love is an action word. Love is action, which means doing it because you are committed. Doing it because you are obedient. Love is the only reason why I will step on your toes, but you will still look on and still keep going. Love is the only reason why I will speak ill of you, but you will see me in church and still smile at me. Love is us. Love is Honorable Bishop Noel Jones. Thank you, Papa. I feel like everyone has said everything. I'm just going to talk about my story with the bishop. Uh, when I met bishop, I wasn't the man that I am today. And I don't think at the level I was, bishop was going to accept me, but he did accept me. He showed me love. And he has been there for me, and he raised me to be the man that I am today. So I feel like I owe Bishop, maybe all of us, we owe the Bishop, but I just want to say, Bishop, thank you. And the greatest things I want to thank the Bishop for today is marrying the First Lady Loretta. It has been my burden seeing the Bishop without a wife. And we always say this in Africa, there is a difference between a wife and a knife. And I'll tell you, the first lady is not the knife. I'll give you an example of a knife. <laughs> I'm counseling a couple in, in Zimbabwe, and the lady is crying, my husband don't want to spend time with me. He doesn't want to spend time with me. And the husband, I said, what's wrong with you? He took his phone and he showed me the message. And the message was like, hey, baby, I just landed. I can't wait to see you. And the wife, who happens to be the knife, said, please hurry here. I want to take you out. And he said, I'm tired. I don't want to go out. Then he says, please do this for me. Then he said, I'm going to sacrifice. Where do you want us to go? And the wife with the knife said, let us just drive around and look for funerals so we can eat their food. <laughs> and he said, hey, no, I'm not going to do that. And she is here busy complaining he doesn't want to spend time with me. But when we turn it around and we look at the First Lady Loretta, she's not a knife, she's a wife. One of the reasons I want to visit Bishop's house in these days is the food in the kitchen. I feel at home when I am with the First Lady Loretta and I feel like 
Bishop have made me completely happy, not only from the ministry side, but also in all parts of life because of marrying the First Lady Rolita. So thank you, Bishop, and congratulations for giving us a wife, not a knife. Thank you. <laughs> and in conclusion, I want to say, in 2014, I gave a prophetic word to the First Lady Loretta that this day will come. And God has fulfilled the prophetic word I did say. And I'm just excited to be part of it. Thank you, Bishop. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, my team, before we close, I need you to put Deuteronomy 24 and 5 on the screen. Deuteronomy, I've canceled all of my meetings. Put Deuteronomy 24 and 5 on the screen. Please, my brothers. Uh, Shelby, throw it up here. My prophet, the bishop, Abram Dixon. Let's Close us out, Lord. Dixon. Let's give the Lord a big praise for today. Let's try that one more time. Let's give the Lord a big praise for today. Amen. There's a plethora of things that we could say on today, um, but I want to touch on the love and I want to talk about our pastor, Bishop Noel Jones, and we'll go home. Thinking of an example of love, uh, one of my brothers touched from New York, he talked about Jesus dying, which was one of the greatest examples of love. Nobody could have loved us like Jesus. Nobody could have took what Jesus took out of love. They beat him all night long. You know the story. For love, he did it. But as I was sitting there, the Lord spoke to me. He says, that sounds real good, but I want you, Dixon, when you get up to remember and remind the people that, yes, Jesus died for us because of love. Somebody say, watch yourself real good here. He also stopped dying because of love. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. There was a thief on the cross who, who, who y'all know the story. Uh, one said something very prophetic. He says, if you be God, then save yourself and save us also. But there was another man who said, you crazy. We deserve to be here. This man hasn't done anything. He says, but when you get into your kingdom, remember me, Jesus stopped dying because of love. Not only did he die for love, but he stopped dying for love. And so uh, I want us to remember that when you really love somebody, you'll put death off. I heard one witness. You'll stop dying. When you really love somebody, you'll tell death, I can't die yet. Because my assignment is not finished. Somebody else still needs me. And so I can't die right now. Uh, I want to close by saying, I want to close by saying, uh, we on the runway. I want to want to close by saying that there's a special grace in Africa. Everything is grace. There's a special grace and a special anointing on now your first lady. Uh, I have seen the bishop hurt. I've seen the bishop disappointed. I've been traveling with the bishop and we get to the hotel and the bishop is having a moment and he's crying and he says to me, I'm not going to preach tonight. And I start crying while I'm ironing the suit and putting out the shoes, I start crying. But I've got a special anointing to call Mother Loretta. <laughs> and Mother Loretta will tell me, Every time, whether he's sick, whether he's disappointed, whether he's hurt at the moment, her response will be the same thing. Uh, Dixon, go downstairs. I'm going to tell you what to get for our pastor. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Uh, there's a lot of people, and I ain't scared of none of y'all, so it don't matter to me. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world who thought they should be sitting in the seat. Uh, because they love the bishop. But there's one thing to love somebody and there's another thing to know how to love somebody. 
And so let me, y'all mad at me? Uh, let me run on to LAX. Uh, I've seen Bishop at the house, uh, Dr. Carl, I'm not telling nothing, uh, Brother Edwin knows all of this. Uh, we travel around with Bishop and, and, and at the house we've seen Bishop hurt and disappointed. I've seen this man cry until I just threw my arms around him. And the response was, here's the close. While he's downstairs having a bad moment and crying, Mother Loretta will get in her car and drive from, y'all don't need to know, uh, and pull up at the house and she'll go in the kitchen. And while Bishop is having a bad day, Mother has a special anointing on a pot. And by the time Bishop finished getting sick and emotional, Sister Loretta got a pot in her hand. Y'all don't like me, but it don't matter. Uh, she's got an anointing for a pot. And there's so much anointing in that pot, if there's anything you leave me, I want the pot. Because there's a special anointing, y'all hear what I just said, on this pot. And after she begins to mix the pot and, and boil the fish and, and make the broth, and, and when she gives it to the man of God, his strength is renewed. I'm going to close by telling somebody, you've been anointed to get a pot. Find somebody and tell them love is in the pot. I've seen the pot save his life. I've seen the pot restore joy in the middle of sorrow. And if you really want to exhibit some love, you need to find somebody who has an anointing with a pot. Because grace is in the pot of this woman. Joy, I've seen his joy be restored in the pot. I got to leave you. Listen. Listen, we honor you, we honor you today, but we also honor the first lady of the city of refuge. And if I've ever told you the truth, she is the reason why we will all get another 25 years out of Bishop Jones. So before we close, would you stand up and let's honor Sister Loretta as we honor Bishop Jones. Come on, let's honor both of them today. Would you do that? If we can bring up the cage, please come forward, Lady Loretta. Bishop, Bishop, can you come down, sir? Hey. They bring the cake bishop. Somebody home. got a pot. Can you read the um, scripture for it, bishop? What's in the pot? What's in the pot? Amen. So I, what I've done is I've canceled all of my meetings around the world because of Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 5 when a man hath taken a new wife he shall not go out to war neither shall he be charged with any business but he shall be free at home one year and chair up his wife which he has taken I'm not going anywhere I'm staying home. Bishop and Loretta, you can cut the key. Now, now, you gotta, you have to cut it, sweetheart. Uh, Do we, is there a plate?
don't, don't faint, please. I didn't know getting married was all of this. <laughs> you like it? I love it. This is his favorite character. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to eat something. I think I'm supposed to eat something. <laughs> I think so. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Everybody who wants some cake, what do we do now? Oh, come back up here. Excuse me. If we can get all of the single ladies. If you can come down for us, all single ladies. All the single ladies? Yes. <laughs> who desire to get married. All the single ladies, if you can come down front. Single ladies. Sing it's okay, single ladies, come on. And if we can bring Congresswoman up front, please. All single ladies, come on. Don't trip off of nobody. If you yeah, can. Thank you. All the single ladies. Right here. Right here. Yeah. If the camera guys, if y'all guys can come to the side, all, sing, all, all the cameras, if you can come on, on stage, yes. All single ladies. <laughs> okay, Loretta. If you can close your eyes, y'all ready? Okay, now listen, there's no need to fight nobody, all right? So on the count of three, one, two, three. Oh God, Jesus. Who got it? Congratulations. Okay, I have a gift for you. So all of the single ladies, if you can take your seat, please. All of the single brothers, if you can come forward. <laughs> if all the single ladies can go back to your seats, please. No, 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 not yet. All of the single brothers. Now, I'm not gonna be the only one about to catch this. Okay, we got one. All of the single brothers. Come on, Elder, yes. Yes, yes, all of the single brothers. All ages. Come on, come on, yes, thank you, thank you. All of, Bishop Jones. Lord have mercy. Only one. Two? Four? On, oh. Oh! Ow! Okay. And as everybody's standing, as they take pictures, we would never end a service without giving someone the opportunity to give their lives to the Lord. I know this is a celebration, but we would never end a service without giving someone, either you online or in person, to give your life to the Lord. 
We have altar workers on the side. If you need prayer, we have someone to touch and agree with you. Even at this, serve, this service end, we can go to the south side of our campus to eat all of the food. The food trucks, the game trucks will be here to 3 p.m. Bishop, we want to thank you for paying for everything. Come on, City of Refuge family. Let's give God a hand praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we go, go with us, go before us, and bring us back at a point in time. Let's drop the balloons in Jesus' name. Bishop, congratulations. Thank Lady you. Loretta, congratulations. Bishop Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. There's a, a, a gentleman came in a wheelchair. Where is he? And I want to give him something that's tangible. I had some money somewhere. Give him that. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And I just believe all the way from Philadelphia, God bless you. Love you all. Omar, God bless. Everybody standing, please. Uh, sing that song, Carl. Love, there's so many things I've got to tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how, cause it's a possibility you look at me differently, love, since the first moment I saw your face, from then on change cause love so many people use your name in vain love those who are low somehow those are saying love through all the ups and downs of joys and hurt love Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Bless us as we go. Give us grace and peace as we take this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. What's outside? Horse carriage ride. We have everything outside. Horses, food, pictures. All right, game truck, everything is outside. All right, group shot with all the preachers. Oh, man, where were you? Turning all the way, all the way from Philadelphia.